Hey everybody, how we doing today? How are we doing? Let me move this bad boy out of the way. Today we're going to talk about something a little different also. I apologize about the movement of that, but anyway, first of all, I want to say, look, I, I honestly, truly appreciate all the support, all the comments on this, uh, on the giveaway video, y'all. <clears throat> I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And uh, it's not like I'm changing the rules, but uh, I don't want the winner to have to wait, you know, like a month or or whatever to, to get a free jig. So if you go back to that video and you look in the description of the video, I actually updated it. So... It's, you know, it's not like I'm, it's not like I'm trying to get, you know, the 250 comments or whatever. That, that's not what it's all about. I just want everybody to have a fair chance, you know, you know, to enter to win these jigs, y'all. But, you know, like I say, I don't want the winner to have to wait no month or whatever. So, I put a deadline on it, and the deadline is going to be tomorrow, which will be Friday. Uh, February the 3rd at 5 o'clock, huh? So you have until tomorrow at 5 o'clock to comment your first name and the state, you know, that you're from to be able to be eligible, el el eligible to win the free jigs. Anyway, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, that'll be the cutoff. I'll put everybody's I'll I got everybody's name wrote down. We just going to put them on a piece of paper, put them in a little five-gallon bucket, shake it up real good, and I'm going to do it on, on uh, YouTube Live, y'all. But anyway, that's that. So I'm still, it's still raining like crazy here, sleet and rain sometimes, cold rain. It's just, it's nasty, y'all. So I actually had to, uh, I'm actually like seven trips behind right now on my schedule. My schedule is all messed up. Anyway, good Lord has plans for everything, and that's all we can do, you know, is, is trust in him and leave in his hands, and it is what it is. So there's nothing we can do about it. So we will make those trips up later on. Anyway, today I want to talk about something, y'all, <clears throat> and uh, some people may agree with me. Some people may say, man, this, this guy is has lost his mind. But look, <clears throat> I told y'all, some people may have heard it, some people may not. But look, I was literally, I remember being a little bitty baby, little bitty boy, four or five years old, in the bottom of a boat, it'd be 20 degrees, middle of the winter, raining, and I was out crappie fishing with my grandfather and my dad and my, my grandfather and his buddies, just whoever. Me and my brother would be in a boat. My brother was two, you know, two years younger than me, and we would be, we fished, you know, as long as we could, as long as we could stand it. But we got so cold, we huddled in the bottom of the boat and we're snuggling to keep warm. I mean, so I, I've been crappie fishing for a lot, many decades, y'all, several decades. So, uh, and it, it's, it's like it's in my blood, man. I can't get enough of it. Just like these jigs, I can't get enough of it. It's addicting to me, y'all. I love it. I love everything about crappie, perch, jigs, you name it. I love it, y'all. All right. That's why we are going after this uh, marina. So anyway, look, bending your hook, getting your hook bent out before you use it. Uh -huh. I use Mustang or Eagle Claw hooks. Uh -huh. They all come from Barlow's. Uh -huh. If I pour it, it's a Mustad or Eagle Claw, right? Look at that. Whether it's a, a regular Arvidine hook or a or a sickle hook, y'all. Uh, I use Mustad and Eagle Claw, okay? Now, a lot of people, they actually design this hook for the crappie's big mouth, y'all. A lot of people love it. A lot of people hate it, all right? They design that for the bigger mouth fish, all right? 
Suppose, you know, that you see the gap right there that offset. Most of them's on a 45 right there. And it gives you a bigger gap. That way, let's, let's get something to compare it to right here. That way that fish, uh, you know, the property has a bigger mouth. That song gone can, uh, can get a bite, you know, and you're not losing it. So anyway, here we go, look. There's a, uh, look at the difference, y'all. You see the difference on that hook. Look at the difference, all right? A lot of people will take and they will bend out. They will bend out their regular old rounded hooks. That way it's wider. That way it has, you know, a better chance, you know, for that crappie to get his mouth on there. Me included, I bend mine out myself. Every hook that I use, I bend it out a little bit, y'all. All right. Let's talk about hooks for a minute. Let's talk about where he come from, what he did, yada, yada, yada. So the earliest hooks, I did a lot of research and been doing a lot of reading on it. The earliest hooks are over 9,000 years ago. That's the the... All the, docu the earliest documented hooks that they can find date back over 9,000 years. Uh, the hooks that we fish with today, uh, just a regular fishing hook, uh, they actually come from Europe. They were made in the 1600s. They come from Europe. Uh, this is just, you know, from research. I do a lot of research on all kinds of things. But anyway... The, the first hooks that were made, y'all, were barbless. They didn't have that barb on there. And I don't know if a lot of people know it or not, but actually that the barb of the hook, that was not designed, that was not originally designed, that little barb right there on the inside of the hook, that was not designed to keep the fish on there. I don't know if a lot of y'all know that. That was actually designed to keep the bait on. That was a sole purpose when it was first designed was to keep the bait on your hook, whether it be a minnow, whatever kind of live bait, whatever kind of bait they had back then. That's why the barb was designed to keep the bait on, all right? Now, over the years, the, the hook has, man, there's, there's thousands of hooks on the market, right? Most of them, 99% of them are advertised you know, they're made of high strength, you know, steel, and they're heat treated. All right, heat treated means that they treated that sucker so it is strong, it's, it's super strong, but it's not, not brittle, meaning that, you know, it can have some flax, it can have some bend, and it will not break. All right, 99%, 99.9% .9 of the hooks we fish with today, they're made by some sort of heat treating process all right this done by computer or however they however you want to say it. it they go through a heat treat process that way they're durable they're super strong but they're not brittle okay so the whole point of this video is y'all i learned this when i was a little bitty boy my grandfather actually taught me this and uh i still do it today and i've had a lot of a lot of people that I fish with, you know, some people's like, you know, hey, my grandpa did the same thing. Or some people's like, hey, man, what are you doing? You know, you're running that hook. But actually, you're not, guys and gals. If you fish a lot of brush top, a lot of cover, what happens? You get hung up, right? You lose a lot of jigs, right? Me, myself, personally, on these guided trips, all right? I'm on the water, you know, 250 to 300 days a year, all right, with customers on my boat, all right, I got a lot of inexperienced anglers, you know, they want to learn, and a lot of, a lot of people that's been fishing with me in the past, hey, they're good anglers now, all right, but when you got inexperienced people on the boat, they stay hung up, all right, and yes, I make these jigs, you know, but it still costs money, all right, and I do not want to sit there all day long and, and change digs out, you know, put a new jig on, put a new jig on, you know. I'm hung up, break off, hung up. It doesn't matter if you use braided line, whatever line you want to use, eventually you're going to break that jig off. 
unless you weaken that hook, all right? Take you a pair of pliers. The very first thing I do with a brand new hook, y'all, all right, is I weaken it, all right? Take that hook and bend it out. See how I bend it out? Look, I bent that hook almost straight. You can see it, all right? Bend that sucker back and forth two or three times, all right? I did it three times, all right? <clears throat> I bent it out. Then I bent that sucker right back to the way that it's supposed to be, all right? Now, when that sucker gets hung up, all right, it's already weakened. That sucker will just bend 99% of the times, that sucker will just bend out, bend out just like that and pop off, all right? I'm telling you this from personal experience. It will save you a ton of a ton of jigs, y'all, uh, especially if you fish a lot of structure, uh, and I fish, all my trips are structure. I mean, I fish brush tops, all right? This right here, I bought these from Academy. I told y'all they was on sale the other day, 347, so I bought some, all right? Just to have on a boot, all right? That's an Eagle Call 1-8. They had an 8, they had a 16th, and I think they had a 64th, I don't remember, but... They had them on sale. That's just a regular Arbadine, a round hook, all right? I do the same identical thing with these hooks, y'all, all right? Look, that comes straight off the shelf. You can either bend it right and left, or you can bend it straight out like I did, all right? A lot of people, I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. A lot of people bend it, you know, right and left. I like to bend mine out, just like you're seeing right there. Look at that. I bent that hook out straight, okay? One, two, three, four, okay? Now, I have had some hooks that break while I'm, while I'm doing this, but it's not that many, y'all. I'm going to say out of one in a hundred might break. But look, I weaken that hook, okay? When that hook gets hung up, y'all, look what it's doing. I'm doing that with my finger, y'all. It's going to give and it's going to pop loose, okay? There's an added benefit to this. And I promise you, I've tried it. I've put it to the test, y'all. Say I get hung up with this jig. Uh, I weakened it. You see me weaken it, right? Say I drop this down. Third or fourth cast, you know, third or fourth time I drop in the water, I get hung up. All right? I don't pull with my pole. You know, I don't bend the pole. I pull it straight toward me, right? You want to pull it straight toward you, okay, to get it loose, okay? It seems to work way better. You don't want to bend your pole, break your pole, none of that. Just pull it straight. To, I grab my line, and I pull it straight toward me, okay? When it pops loose... I let it fall straight back down. And I'm telling you, this is the honest to God truth. I have caught more fish that way. I don't know. It, it must be something natural to the crappie, to the fish. I don't know because I can't tell you the amount of times that I have actually been hung up. All right. And from weakening that hook, I just pop it loose. All right. It's, it, it moves. Got give in it. All right. I weakened it. All right, that sucker popped loose, and as it's falling back down, bam, trigger the strike, y'all. Y'all, I like giving these, you know, these little tips. Some people may think I'm crazy, you know, but this is just from years of crappie fishing, y'all, years of, of, of knowledge, you know, that, that I learned from my dad, from my grandfather, that I've learned from, you know, other very good fishermen that I fish with, um, uh, I've been to almost every state in the United States. Uh, I've been to 47 states, 47 of them. And every, all 47 of them I always, uh, always took me a rod and reel. And I fished all over the, all over the United States, y'all. And I met some very, very, you know, good fishermen. And I fished with some good fishermen. And I always pick up and I always listen to what they got to say. And some of my best tips I've learned from just meeting people on the water and fishing with them. You know, meeting them on the water, it turns into a friendship. 
you know, and eventually down the road we go fishing. Uh, and I learn from them or they learn from me, vice versa. But I'm telling you, if you will take and you will pre-bend that hook, pre-weaken it, uh, that will help you from staying hung up. Uh, you see a brand new sickle hook. Uh, that's one of mine. I'm just going to bend it out three or four times. You see what I'm doing? I'm bending it out. Okay, if it breaks, hey, throw it away. But it's not going to break, y'all. They're made through that heat treat process, you know, to be very, very, very durable. Uh, I guarantee you, okay, that will keep you on the fish and and stop. I mean, if you're on a fish and you're catching them, you know, one after another, you don't want to stop every couple of minutes and tie a new jig head on. This little tip right here, guys and gals, I promise you, this will help you out. It will help you with your catch rate. Mostly, it will help you from losing jigs. These jigs done got high, y'all. And whether you make them yourself or whether you buy them, the material, the time that goes into them, hey, it's done got high, y'all. I mean, uh, my materials have went up uh, over 50%, you know, 35 to 50% in the last two years. So, I mean, everything about these jigs are high. Anyway, guys and gals, I appreciate y'all. <clears throat> um, I hope this little tip helps a lot of people out. It's mainly for people to fish a lot of structure, y'all. Uh, people to fish brush tops, lay downs, logs, trees, stuff like that. Try this little trick out, and I guarantee you, y'all, it will help you out. Look, God bless each and every one of y'all. <clears throat> Remember to give away. I'm going to cut it off the deadline tomorrow at 5 o'clock. We're going to do the drawing tomorrow, and I will get the jigs out in the mail first thing Saturday. And uh, next week sometime, the winner will be getting the 12 free jigs. Look, God bless each and every one of y'all. Um, y'all say a prayer for everybody in this winter storm's path. We, we are almost through it, just a lot of rain, but there is a lot of people that are without power. Uh, let's say a prayer for them and, uh, you know, that God will protect them and watch over them and keep them warm. Look, I uh, appreciate it, guys and gals. We'll see y'all next time.